Number one, the cost for an upcoming field trip is $30 per student. The cost of the field trip C in dollars is a function of the number of students. Select all possible outputs for the function defined by C of X equals 30 times X. So when we're looking at this, this is um, X is the number of students. So when we're thinking about numbers that X can be, X can only be positive whole numbers because you can't have half of a student attend a field trip. So the outputs here are going to depend on X being a whole number. So we could do like 30 times one, so we could get $30. We could do 30 times two students going gives us 60. 30 times three would give us 90 and so on. So these outputs are going to be multiples of 30. Those are the only ones that are going to be possible. So 20 is not possible. 30 would be that one student went. 50 isn't going to be possible. 90 would be good. That would be three students. And then 100 would not be possible. Number two, a rectangle has an area of 24 centimeters squared. Function F gives the length of the rectangle in centimeters, then its width is W centimeters. Determine if each value in centimeters is a possible input for the function. So now when we're talking inputs, we're talking measurements, right? We're talking width and measurements can be um, decimals, but they can't be zero and they can't be negative. So when you're talking to get a rectangle, right, these measurements need to be positive numbers, but they can be decimals. So they can be whole or decimal. So three is fine. Half a centimeter is fine. 48 centimeters is fine. We cannot have negative six as a width measurement and we cannot have zero as a width measurement. Otherwise we wouldn't have a rectangle. Number three, select all possible input output pairs for the function y equals x cubed. So remember our first number in an ordered pair is our x and the second one is a y. So this one is saying that our y value is gonna equal negative one cubed, right? The x value. So we wanna see if when we plug in this x value, will it equal negative one? So negative one cubed means we're gonna be doing negative one times negative one times negative one. So negative one times negative one is positive one. And then we still need to multiply by negative one again, and we get back negative one. So this one, tells us that y equals negative one, which is what we see here. So A is good. B has us putting in negative two cubed. So then we're gonna have negative two times negative two times negative two. So negative two times negative two gives us positive four. And then we're multiplying still by this negative two. That gives us negative eight. So this one tells us that when we plug in negative two, we get back y equals negative eight, which is not what they gave us. They told us that would be positive eight. So that one is false. Number three, uh, or sorry, part C, we're plugging in three. So three cubed. So this is gonna be three times three times three. Well, three times three is nine times three is 27. That's not what they gave us here. Um, so three cubed is 27, not nine. Part D asks us to do one half cubed. So when we do one half times one half times one half, when you multiply fractions, you multiply tops times tops and bottoms times bottoms. So we're gonna get one times one times one is one and then two times two times two is eight. So we get one eighth, which is what they have here. So then part D is good. E, we're gonna get four cubed, and four cubed is four times four times four. Four times four is 16, times four again, 
gives us 64, which is what they said here. So that's good. Um, and then F, we're going to plug in 1 cubed. Well, if we take a positive times itself, no matter how many times, it's going to be positive. So this won't work to get back that negative. If you wanted to see it written out, it'd be 1 times 1 is 1. And then times that 1 again just gives you a positive 1. Number four, a small bus charges 350 per person for a ride from a train station to a concert. The bus will run if at least three people take it and cannot fit more than 10 people. Function B gives the amount of money that the bus operator earns when N people ride the bus. So that's going to be B of N would equal 350 per person N. Um, A asks us to identify all the numbers that make sense as inputs and outputs for this function. Okay, so your inputs are going to be, um, and otherwise known as the domain, right, are going to be three, because there has to be at least three people riding. So we start at three, and then it's going to be um, all the way up to 10, because we can't fit more than 10 people. And then you can't have... Um, partial people, right? It's whole numbers, three, four, five, not three and a half. Now the outputs here are going to be when we multiply by 350, because that's going to be per person. And you're not going to have any numbers in between that because you can't have partial people. So we couldn't have partial amounts here. So I'm just going to put R for range. And so we would get 1050 if we do three times 350 if we multiply and then we'll just keep adding 350s onto this okay or you can think of multiplying each of these and so then um i just i'm just adding 350 each time up to 10 people right so 10 times 350 is 35 or if we kept adding 350 on for each additional person now you want to plot these and when we plot these, we are not going to have a line because we're not going to do partials. We're just going to have each of these ordered pairs. So like 3, 10, 50 will be on there. 4, 14, which again is 4 times 350. And then 5, 17, 50, and so on. So you're just going to plot those points. So at 3, we're at about 10, 50. Four, we're at 14, and halfway between here would be five, right? 10, 15, 20. Um, at five, we're at 17, 15. At six, we're at 21. Seven, we're at 24. Um, 24, 50. Eight, we're at 28. Nine, we're at 31, 50 and then 10, we're at 35, and then do not connect. So no, no line, because otherwise that's saying we can have partial people riding, which we can't. Number five, two functions are defined by these equations, where f of x equals five minus 0.2x, and g of x is equal to 0.2 times the quantity x plus five. Select all statements that are true. So this first one is asking us about the f function. Is f of 3 greater than 0? So let's find f of 3. And this means take and plug 3 in for x in the f function. So we'll plug in 3 for this x. So then we get 5. And then negative 0.2 times 3 is negative 0.6. And that gives us 4.4. So what this is really saying is that 4.4 is greater than 0 since this is f of 3, and that's a true statement. Then it says that f of 3 is greater than 5. Well, we already know what f of 3 is, right? It's 4.4. Is that greater than 5? And that is false. Part C asks us to use the G function, so G of negative 1. So let's figure out what G of negative 1 equals. And that's going to be 0.2 times the quantity negative 1 plus 5. 
So we'll simplify inside those parentheses first, which is going to be 4. And then 0.2 times 4 is 0.8. So then this, this is saying 0.8 is equal to 0.8, and that is true. Then in part D, it's asking us, is G of negative 1 less than F of negative 1? Well, we already know G of negative 1 is 0.8. We just figured that out. So let's figure out what F of negative 1 is. So we're going to plug negative 1 into the F function. So we're going to get 5 minus 0.2 times negative 1. And negative 0.2 times negative 1 is positive 0.2. So we're going to get 5.2 for f of negative 1. So is 0.8 less than 5.2 is what this is really asking, and that is true. Then part E asks us to find f of 0 and g of 0 and says that they're equal. So f of 0 is equal to 5 minus 0.2 times 0. And negative 0.2 times 0 is 0, so this is just equal to 5. So f of 0 is equal to 5. So then let's take a look at what g of 0 is and see if it's equal to that. So we'll plug this into the g function, and we'll get 0.2 times 0 plus 5. So we'll do the parentheses first. So 0 plus 5 is 5. And then 0.2 times 5 is 1. So we're getting that g of 0 equals 1. So this is saying that um, 5 is equal to 1, basically, and that is not true. So e is false. Number 6, the graph of function f passes through the coordinates 0, 3, and 4, 6. Use function notation to write the information each point gives us about the function. So remember that when we have an ordered pair, we always have x and then the output when x is put into the function. So an ordered pair is x and then your y is really f of x. So we can write these as x and then this is f of x. So f of 0 is equal to 3 is what this is looking for. The input to the function 0 gives us back 3. And in this other one, the input is 4. So if we plug 4 into the function, we get back 6. Number 7, match each feature of the graph with its corresponding coordinate point. If the feature does not exist, choose none. So let's go ahead. I'm just going to plot these points on here first. So 0, 7 is looking at this. Um, 1.52 is looking here. And then 4.16 is looking here. So when we look at this, we can see that 4.16 is at the top. So that's your maximum. Okay, so number three goes with A. The minimum is number two, 1.52. The vertical intercept where it crosses the vertical axis, that's number one, zero, seven is where it crosses the vertical axis. And then the horizontal intercept, the graph never touches the horizontal axis, so that's none, number four. Number eight, the graph shows the audience in millions of two TV shows as functions of the episode number. For each show, pick two episode numbers between which the function has a negative average rate of change. And remember, that means it needs to be going down between those two points. Estimate the average rate of change or explain why it's not possible. So when we're looking at show A, we're looking for two points where it goes down from left to right. And these keep seeming to go up. This one looks like it maybe stays about the same, but it doesn't look like it goes down. 
So there is no negative rate of change here, okay? So none increases um, between all the points or all episodes is what this is representing. Then show C, you have quite a few options, okay? So you could do here. So it goes down here. And then it's decreasing basically on all of these points until you get to here, it kind of evens out. Um, so wherever you want to choose on this one. So if I say um, from five to six, so if I use this steep drop here, um, it goes from about like five, um, maybe, I don't know, let me see, let me get a flatter line here. Okay, so this one, maybe it's like 5.2 million. And then it decreases down to like 3.9 million. So the average rate of change, you look at how far did it drop. So it dropped 1.3 million per episode right there or in that one episode. We would divide it by the number of episodes, but from five to six is only one. So then it, it has a negative 1.3 million average rate of change. If you pick from like five to episode five to seven, then you'd need to divide by two. Um, so there's one example. You could do others, like I said. So if we wanted to do, um, and maybe I'll show you one where you pick different ones. So if I pick from here to here, so then I'd be looking at episode five to seven. Episode five, like I said, has about 5.2 million. And that number could be different. You're just estimating. And then um, to seven, to episode seven. So here's episode seven. It's at about 3 million. So that's going to drop to 3 million. So now this is a decrease of 2.2 million, but over two episodes. We'd have to divide by two. So then that's an average um, rate of change of down 1.1 million between episodes five and seven. So then you had to divide because you did more than just one episode. So those are kind of two different examples. And there's multiple more that you could have done. That's just two.